Welcome everybody to SBC Broadcasting Center. I'm here with Brandon and Jason, and today we're going to be talking about our NBA upcoming season MVPs, and let's start off with Jason. Yeah, the MVP award, most valuable player. Um, sometimes it doesn't really speak to the name most valuable player. Um, sometimes it's the best player in the league. Um, but this year, I think we're going to see that most valuable player, like actual meaning, going to. And I think this year's award uh, will go to Dallas Mavericks point guard Luka Doncic. What he's done these past years goes so underappreciated. It's just the playoff success is a little limited, and that's why people kind of forget about how good his statistical seasons are, his amazing triple doubles that we see almost nightly, which is really, really impressive. And I think this is the year where he steps up. He averages like 30 points. Maybe even he gets at close to averaging a, a triple double again. Um, I really have to for him. And um, if the playoff success can happen, he'll go uh, a lot more appreciated. He's going to show how valuable he is to a team if he can lead them pretty deep into a playoff run, especially in a really, really good Western Conference. And he will dominate the regular season. Um, and I think that, that he'll take the MVP award. That's a really good point there by uh, Jason. I, I think that Luka Doncic is definitely out there. Um, let's see what... Brandon's picks are? Yeah, Luca is a, a great op um, option at MVP. He, he shows it on offense. He can do everything. He, he's great on defense, but um, I'm going to go another point guard but in the East, and it's uh, Trey Young. I think Trey Young shows how much he can do on offense and defense. He's an all around player. Uh, I think he can shoot all the time, and he makes all those shots that. An MVP needs to do, and I think Trey Trey can. Uh, I think he's been young, and I think this is kind of the year he starts to get into the MVP race. Yeah, I like um, Trey Young a lot, but I don't. I think you're kind of hyping him up a little bit too much on defense. Um, he's based on the defensive stats, like defensive rating. He's been horrible on defense, one of the worst defenders in the league. But I think if he works on it this offseason, he could turn into a solid defender, and that would actually honestly give him a good shot at MVP because we know Trey Young works harder than almost anyone in this league. Um, and he's going to try to prove the doubters wrong and try to improve on defense. And if that happens, I could totally see him being the top five MVP again and possibly winning it, like you said. But I feel like Luka is a safer pick since he's not necessarily a defensive liability. Yes, he's not a good defender, but he, he, he can be somewhat reliable. Yeah, I definitely think if Luka works a little bit on the offseason with some of his needs, he definitely could be a good candidate for the future. Oh, and we have some breaking news. Mason, what do we have? NBA announces that they will have two MVPs from – from for now, one for the East, one for the West. That that is a really big shocker, and that completely changes almost every opinion that most people will have. Um, mm -hmm. What do what do you guys think about this? I think this is um, not the best idea because an MVP is one standout player from the league. Yes, there's two uh, conferences, but you uh, you gotta have one good MVP. You don't share the MVP with someone. So I think this is. Um, not a smart decision by the NBA, and I think they should go back to a one-man MVP. I agree with that, but for a different reason. I feel like having two MVPs is not a good idea um, because, let's say, from one conference, you have someone who's a, the, the best candidate for the award, and there's someone else. Like Let's say like the top three candidates are from the Western Conference, and then the fourth guy's from the East. There's a huge drop-off, so like having their name written like on an award that people are going to look at for years and years I just don't think it's like acceptable. Like, I mean, it's fine, but it's not an accurate representation of what went on in the season. So let's say, for example, the top two candidates for MVP are like Luca and Steph, and then you have like Giannis at number three. Like that, that's gonna show a bit of a drop off. Um, but it also is kind of similar to like I believe the MLB kind of does stuff like that, the AL MVP and the NL MVP. Um, but this is just something that's a little new for the NBA. Um, I personally don't like it. Um, but I mean. I guess it can recognize both conferences because, I mean, now that we think about it, the East and the West, they're getting a little more even as we speak because um, the East, the Eastern Conference team just won a championship this year, and the top team that most people are saying for next year, the Brooklyn Nets, they're also, uh, when they're also from the Eastern Conference, and um, if we can get both conferences even, I guess that would be an accurate representation. I still don't like it, but I can definitely see why they did that. I see both your points. Personally, I don't really think it's the smartest idea. I think they should just keep one main MVP maybe create an award that's like best player in the East, best player in the West. And that is going to wrap it up for our SBC talk show. I'm Mason Fullerton with Brandon and Jason, and we'll catch you next time.